It is really heartbreaking that in a country as wealthy as ours, too many Australians don't have a safe place to call home. Minister, four months in the chair now, you've inherited quite a situation with a lot of different challenges. What strikes you about the scenario that people in Australia face at the moment in terms of housing? Well, I was housing minister briefly under the Rudd-Gillard years, and I've noticed that in the decades since, particularly in my electorate office, I've had more people come in that are in housing stress or at risk of homelessness, uh, particularly, you know, double-income families who ordinarily wouldn't be coming in to access, you know, MP services or even homelessness or housing services before in their life. So there's no doubt the situation is very challenging. There's no doubt it's got worse over the last decade. As a new minister in, in a rapidly changing environment in when it comes to housing, where do you start? What, what's, what's the plan? Well, the plan is, is to try and get some of our election commitments up off the ground as quickly as we can, uh, particularly those that get Australians into owning their own home quickly. So the regional first home buyer guarantee, we were going to start on the 1 of January. We've brought that forward. So that'll start on 1 October. So that will be for first home buyers in regional Australia with 5% deposit able to purchase their first home with government assistance. Uh, we're working on the government equity scheme, the help to buy scheme, which we want to get. We've obviously got to legislate but we, and work with the financial institutions. So we're hoping to get that up and running in the first half of next year. And then, of course, with our Housing Australia Future Fund, the 30,000 social and affordable homes, we want to get them up and on the ground as quickly as possible. So we're looking at how quickly can we do that? We're working with states and territories, with social housing providers, with the construction industry about what does that time frame look like? When can we start to get some of those homes on the ground? But also while we're waiting for the Housing Australia Future Fund, we have to legislate it, we have to wait for a return. What do we do in the meantime? So a housing infrastructure facility uh, is a billion dollar fund. About half of it has been committed, the other half is still sitting there. So what we wanna do is widen the remit of that to try and get more houses on the ground faster. So that's about leveraging private capital, including superannuation and working with the sector, with social housing providers, with states and territories again, to try and see what can we do faster? What can we do to get more money on the ground that gets more homes built faster for Australians? There's a lot of opportunity for reform, obviously, and systemic change, which is essential, but there are so many people that are hurting right now who won't see the benefits of the reform agenda that you have for quite some time. How do we help people now, particularly the stories that we hear of people living in their cars or in tents or families crammed into small, uh, unsuitable accommodation. How do we help them now? Yeah, we know that far too many Australians are doing it tough and don't have a safe, affordable place to call home. And like you, I hear some of the appalling stories. It just breaks your heart. Like, what can we do immediately? Which is why we've opened up that infrastructure facility as quickly as we can to try and get as many houses on the ground as quickly as we can. But it's also about leveraging some of the work that the states and territories are doing. I mean, between them, they're gonna have about 15 and a half thousand social and affordable homes on the ground in the next two years by 2024. Uh, so it's about working with them about what else can we add that allows them to scale up and do more. Um, also working with the social housing providers with some of the schemes that they've got on the ground. What can we do now to, to be able to do that? So we're looking at, to do as much as we can do as quickly as we can because we know that too many Australians are doing it tough. Obviously, it's it's more expensive and more challenging to buy a home in, in the past sort of decade or so, uh, and there's a lot of help for buyers. Do you think renters have, have been forgotten for a long time? Uh, well, rental affordability is certainly an increasing problem, but certainly, you know, there's a willingness and an enthusiasm across the country to look at what each other's doing and seeing what's working because uh, we do need to address it across the board. We know that the states and territories have most of the levers when it comes to rents uh, and they know that too and they're looking at what more can they do. The, the, the meeting of, of housing ministers uh, is important. Uh, Queensland's having a housing summit. There was a parliamentary inquiry in the last government looking at affordability and supply. Do you worry that, that people who are desperate might look and, and think that there's just talk fests and, and not a great deal of action? I, I absolutely understand that, you know, when you hear people's heartbreaking stories, they need somebody to be able to support them now. We do provide additional assistance to the states through the National Housing and Homelessness Agreement. It's about $1.6 billion per year. Uh, and the states, of course, more than match that and they can provide uh, services for people that are homeless or at risk of homelessness immediately. And those services are there and I know that the states are doing a lot of the heavy lifting and ramping some of those up. We do know that it's a really critical situation, which is why I think there's a willingness from the states and territories of all persuasions, no matter the political party, 
to work with the Commonwealth and work with local government and the sector, importantly, to say, how do we work on this together? Uh, no tier of government is going to solve this alone. It's going to take everybody on the same page working together. We've seen for several years now the level of uh, of involvement of private investors in the rental market decrease rapidly, and it's on the back of a number of factors from APRA reforms to uh, tax hikes in the states and territories. Does do you see the sort of value of the private rental market in in coming to this this crisis uh, and and being able to help and help quickly? Well, I think everybody plays a role. It, it's an integrated housing sector in Australia. Um, you know, the social and affordable housing. There's a private rental market. There's a private ownership market. The construction industry has some supply constraints at the moment that were raised at our Jobs and Skills Summit. Uh, so we know that there are a lot of issues at the moment. And so that's why we need to work together, like why we need the three tiers of government, why we need the sectors, the social housing providers, but also the private investors and the property council and people like that all working together. What we need to do is all be heading in the same direction. We need a national housing and homelessness plan, which is what we want to do. We want to work with everybody to get a plan together, agree on the things we can agree and all head in the same direction. Homelessness is a, is a growing issue. Uh, the figure, I think, is sort of around 116,000 that's, that's kind of come from the census. A lot of housing groups say that pre-pandemic it was probably double that just for a variety of different reasons. It, it, it's just shameful in a country as rich as ours that, that there are so many people without a home, isn't it? The census data was from 2016, 116,000 people without a place to call home. And we expect that with the census data coming out uh, next year that it'll be worse than that. Um, certainly anecdotally and all the evidence that we're getting from providers on the ground suggests that uh, things have got worse and not improved. We do all need to be working together. Nobody can solve this alone. We need to all be working together to get it done. A big barrier for not just first home buyers, but downsizers particularly is stamp duty. It's, it's tens of thousands of dollars uh, particularly in a state like New South Wales where prices are so high. Um, the states seem interested in, in ditching that but not without federal support because of the loss of revenue. Is that on the table or is that something the Albanese government might consider helping with? Well, it's obviously an issue for the states and territories. We know that um, the ACT, of course, has done that. Uh, New South Wales is talking about doing it. Um, you know, They've shown that it can work. Um, certainly in terms of the National Housing and Homelessness Plan, uh, we're looking at how we work together on a whole range of issues. We've asked the states and territories in terms of what they're doing with their interventions and uh, their innovations in each state and territory so that we can learn from each other. But I think importantly, we also need data and evidence about what interventions work and what don't. Uh, sometimes interventions have unintended consequences. Uh, so we need to look at the data and the evidence about an integrated housing system and how it works. You've mentioned social housing. Uh, obviously, Anthony Albanese has spoken a lot about his, his sort of personal passion for, for that part of the, the housing equation, given his experiences. You've also got a personal experience in that regard? Yeah, I, I spent my early childhood in Broadacre Public Housing. And for me, it really... Um, was important to have a safe and affordable place to call home. And I think that it's not just about shelter, it's not just about a home, it's much more than that. It's about a sense of belonging, it's about being part of a community, it's about being able to establish relationships, go to school, have parents that are able to go to work. Because unless you've got a safe, affordable place to call home, those other things don't happen and people don't participate in our economy fully. So it's really critical for people to be able to have that safe, affordable place that they can call home. It's, it's an area that, uh, regardless of political party or, or the state, uh, has been dramatically underfunded for decades now. And, and the proof of that is the enormous waiting list for people desperate to get into social housing. That must just be heartbreaking when you're, you're aware of what's behind those statistics. They're not just numbers. No, they're, they're real people. And they're people who are stressed out. There are people who are really struggling to make ends meet. There are people who, as I said, don't know whether or not they're going to make their next payment, whether it be their rent or their mortgage. And, you know, some of them have got elderly parents, some of them have got young children or partners, some of them are living with disability. I mean, it is really heartbreaking that in, you know, a country as wealthy as ours, too many Australians don't have a safe place to call home and we need to do better. And the only way we're going to improve it is by working together. There are enormous expectations on, on you and, and the reform that, that will uh, be carried out in the next uh, little while. What does success look like to you in, in I don't know how many years, in, in a little while, what would you be happy with uh, to see the, the needle sort of move? 
I'd be happy with increased housing affordability for Australians. I'd be happy with us uh, moving forward on our target of the 30,000 affordable and social homes within the first five years of the Housing Australia Future Fund. I'd be happy if more Australians have got a safe, affordable place to call home. Buying is an important part of that. It might not seem like it if you're a struggling tenant, but more people into homes, there's more rental rental properties. How sustainable are programs like first home buyer grants or share, shared equity grants, particularly when property prices, not at the moment, but generally keep going up? That must be such an expensive part of the budget and something that perhaps keeps Jim Chalmers up at night. Well, the shared equity scheme is a limited number of places. We're talking 10,000 places a year. Um, we know that in other jurisdictions where it's worked, uh, particularly in Western Australia, where it's been running for more than 20 years, that it actually works incredibly well uh, and that the people who are in the scheme tend to exit it after seven to eight years. They tend to refinance or go into their own home ownership uh, on their own without the government equity. Uh, so we do know that they work and that they're really good at getting people that otherwise wouldn't get into the housing market to be able to purchase their own home. We know that lots of Australians can pay their rent on time and they could therefore service a mortgage. Uh, so it's about how do we get them over that barrier of having to save for years and years for a deposit? How do we get them into that first home? Or for older Australians, particularly those who may have lost their home, uh, we know that there's a growing cohort of older women uh, with no superannuation and no home. Like how do we get them back into home ownership? What sort of assistance or step up can we give them? And the government equity scheme uh, from all the evidence and data we've seen today, it works and works well. Is there potential to expand it? It is a limited scheme, as you mentioned. Is there? Well, well, we'll obviously have to have a look at that and see what the demand is. But certainly, you know, the, the family home guarantee system will stay in place. Uh, that was from the former government and our government equity scheme uh, and a regional first home buy scheme. I mean, we're talking a 5% deposit. In terms of some other measures that might help, build to rent is an interesting space. There's there's huge potential there to, to pump out tens of thousands of properties, constrained by by tax though. Um, is, is that something that you're willing to look at, how to make it easier for, for developers to get into that well, space? We're talking to superannuation companies, particularly funds about build to rent, about what sort of role and what levers can the government have available to it that will make that stack up for investors. What we want to do is, you know, superannuation funds, obviously, uh, they have workers in those funds and those workers need homes. So what is the role? How do we actually access and open up that private capital? So we're having a look at that and what does that look like? And certainly with the housing infrastructure facility, uh, that h up to half a billion dollars that's available there, we'll be looking at that to try and leverage some of that private capital investment into similar schemes. For people who are waiting for the plans to, to see the detail, what kind of time frame are you thinking in, in terms of being able to tell people what help is coming, what long-term systemic change looks like? So as I said, we're focusing early on trying to get uh, the schemes into private home ownership up and running as quickly as we can so that the first home buyer in regional areas will be up and running from the 1st of October. We want to get the government equity scheme that helped to buy up and running by early next year. We want to try and introduce legislation this year for the Housing Australia Future Fund. And then of course, we want to get our affordability and supply council up and running before the end of the year. Uh, so we've got a lot of work to do. And then longer term, we want the housing and homelessness plan to have short, medium and long-term sort of goals that we want to be able to meet working with, uh, not just ourselves, but with states and local government in the sector. Is that daunting, all that work that's ahead of you? <laughs> uh, it's challenging but exciting. You know, there's an impact to change a lot of lives for a lot of Australians and it will matter. It will matter in the short term but particularly in the long term for the next generation. Just uh, finally one cheeky question if I could. Uh, some of the other reforms that have been on the table at various points over the years like capital gain tax reform and negative gearing reform, is, is that part of the equation at all? Is that on the table? Well, we obviously went to two elections with negative gearing as our policy and we didn't win. Uh, we've won this election with a broad, ambitious housing policy. My focus is in implementing our election commitments and that's what I'm in a hurry to do. That's what I'm focusing on and that's what I think the job is for the next three years.